You're perhaps, the way I think of you, you're probably one of the last of, of that generation of drivers uh, that's one of the smoother, uh, easier going guys, but that, that could still dominate a race. You seem to, that seemed to be a dying breed, I think. I, uh, yeah. You know, the, 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 the non-flamboyant type. Yeah, I guess it could be. Um... um I'm probably a little more humble from the standpoint of, of oh, the fact that uh, you know I was born in the race and, and we start at the very bottom rung of the ladder, very bottom. I mean, uh, uh, my dad was not even a racer when we started. He was uh, a dealership mechanic only for a few years and uh, had, and then moved to, into a gas station and operated that for a year or two, but really had no racing experience. I mean, we started at raw level kindergarten level of racing and, and work to this point where we're at now well, however it took years and years i mean 40 years of our family racing i mean it uh so you don't you definitely are not going to have an attitude your first five or ten or fifteen years when you haven't got anything to even be have an attitude about and by then you you know when you do get more successful you know it's you know where you came from. You know what you did and how hard it was to get there. It's, there's really nothing to toot your horn about anymore. You know? it, it, it wears the cockiness off you, I think, when you have to start out from scratch like that and, uh, and realize how easy it can all go away again. Uh, racing can knock you back real quick. And one minute you're doing real good, next minute you know, it'll put you right back in your spot again. Well, you, know, you need to be a little more humble about that. You need to accept the fact that uh, I don't get real excited if we do bad or, or real excited if we do good from that standpoint because, like I say, you got to, in order to survive in it, you have to be willing to accept what, you know, what happens, what, what that day brings, what that race brings. If you win, that's great. If you lose, that's okay. We'll do it next week. Uh, you can't let it eat at you too much or you never survive in this sport. Uh, Oh, you, boy, we just did this and we did that one. That's, that's fine. However, you know, however <laughs> next week uh, we might uh, blow three engines and wreck the car, so I ain't going to get real excited. <laughs> but, uh, Back in 1993 and 94, when you were running the uh, Chrysler LeBaron with the Winnebago backing, you had one of those seasons, I guess we could call. Well, Shouldn't get too excited over it. <laughs> uh, you had one win in 93 at Springfield uh, on the dirt, and you had none in 94. You went through a lot of motors. Um, I, don't, I don't recall a lot of wrecks, but um, uh, except for the, 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 what, the 95 car wreck, whatever it was at Daytona. But um, I guess, again, that, that, that's what it comes back to. Huh? There's, there's a lot more to life than, than just the, the, the nuts and bolts, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's... Um that was a pretty disappointing 93 and 94 season because when we did make the switch to Chrysler 91, right out right out of the box, we won Pocono and uh, 
and ran very strong the rest of that season. And in 92, I think we had five wins with the Chrysler and ran really strong, almost won the championship for him. But then 93 come along, and it really dried up, and then 94 kind of dried up, and that was probably some of the reason we moved on to the truck series. Uh, um, I think it was time to make a move. Uh, you know, it's like any other sport, you you know, players that are on a team for a while and they're doing good, and then he goes dry, and I think you just need to make a move. That's part of the reason we did leave Ark and move to the truck series is to... Uh, to lift that spirit back up again and be challenged again, I guess. And, you know, that's what, you know, it's like say, you know, you can toot your horn a lot, but it can knock you back real quick. <laughs> Plus maybe even perhaps simple economics because at the time that was a, a relatively new entity to get, to get the Chrysler brand, Dodge, Chrysler, what have you, back into motorsports. And it wasn't necessarily Dodge or Chrysler, it was the Mopar performance parts that you were getting back into, so perhaps maybe going, perhaps maybe going back in, a, going into NASCAR, maybe maybe just a money thing because you get more exposure, you get more more back for the money. They would get more back for the money. Well, I, I think um, Winston Cup has it, it just gotten so popular that uh, they really need to get back into it. I tried to convince them to get back into it in the early early nineties, and. Uh, even from the standpoint, if it didn't help sell cars or if they didn't have a car that fit that series, it, it at least give their employees and their, their dealers and stuff something to cheer for on Sunday. And uh, However, they weren't ready. I mean, the, the parts weren't there. And uh, But you know, I felt if they would have put a little more funding behind it, we could have got there a lot quicker than the year 2001. I mean... The effort we had in 91 or 2 was just a very small group of people at Mopar Performance that w wanted to, to keep continue building race parts and, and keep Chrysler involved in racing, even against the, the, the company's uh, better judgment. They really weren't behind this effort. This was uh, a Mopar thing because Mopar is in the performance parts. And, that, uh, and there was very little funding, very little development money or anything. And... Uh, you know, had the company got behind it back then, they probably would have done Ben in Winston Cup by now. But uh, that small group of people led to where we're at right now. I mean, the guys like Larry Henry and and uh, Larry Shepard and uh, the very you know even guys like Jerry Churchill who who went out on a limb and, and put the first car together for for Arca. You know, there's a lot of little people that have gone by the wayside that contribute to where we're at today. When I look at your racing career, uh, it seems to me maybe it was a little backwards. <laughs> you, you, well, well, you started out as, as your brother Ron's crew chief when Ron run the Purple 99 and, and the NASCAR Grand, at the, that time Grand National Division. And then you started driving. Ron became a crew chief. You ran USAC stock cars, which was still at the time, even though it, it's now folded, it was still fairly popular, ran a lot of super speedways. And then you started running late models. <laughs> how, how in the world did that happen? <laughs> well, that, uh, that was not my choice by any means. Um, what happened there is um, the, the original car that I built to, to learn to drive with was actually a USAC stock car. However, you, it was a what they call a pony car. It was a Dodge Challenger, which could run with a Dodge Charger, the bigger cars. They combined them. You could run both. However, the Challenger, the small pony car, had to have a small block type engine. Well, I didn't have a small block. I had some Hemi's left over from the NASCAR days, and uh, uh, we had been building this car right along. Ron promised to help me drive, you know, put something together where I could race. And but at the meantime, his car got destroyed at Daytona, so he made good on his promise and helped me get a car together. But I had to use his. 426 Hemi because that's the only thing we had so the only thing we really could do with a car was to run late models so we spent a year running uh, late models and uh
we finally got a small block engine program together, and I went off and run USAC. And uh, I even run um, the Grand National Race at Daytona and Talladega that year in 78. And things were rolling along pretty good. I built a new car in 78 and had some pretty nice stuff. And uh, we getting, was getting stronger and running pretty good. And uh, went to Texas World Speedway and uh, blew the engine in that car and caused one heck of a wreck. I mean, we had 10 cars piled up on fire. My car completely destroyed. And... Uh, that was it. I mean, I, I didn't have no money. The car was junk, and uh, I had built it that same time frame. I had built a uh, car for uh, uh, a friend of ours that races Mount Clemens, and he said, why don't you just try my car? So, well, it's better than doing nothing. But now I'm back at the local tracks again at Mount Clemens in Toledo, and uh, and then we got successful at it. And once you get successful, it's hard to leave. You know, we struggle for a year or two and then all of a sudden uh, things really took off and all of a sudden we're the black band and we're just kicking butt and we're just winning everywhere and once you're doing that you're kind of stuck there for a while but uh, that finally kind of dried up a little bit in 84 and it was time to make a move there I felt like you know we had nuts enough and we need to we got an opportunity I had a, a personal friend named Joe Deaton that said I'll help you finance to get an ARCA car together if you'd like to do that. And yeah, I'd like to do that. So, and then we got back to ARCA and got back on the speedways. Atlanta was our first race out and led that race. Actually, ran pretty good. And Daytona and back to and worked our way up through ARCA. Yeah. 